Perfectguitar.com. 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 You're going to eat it. How do you get ready to perform? I used to, years ago, I'd, I'd sit and practice all day, and I actually found that it made my playing, I'd, I'd enjoy it less, because I'd get so kind of wound up about the playing and how it should be, that I actually forgot that you're supposed to have fun with it. I, I never practice on, on gig days. You know, I, in fact, the only time I really practice practice is if I'm working something out for an album or a, a song in the studio. And the rest of the time, I actually just play guitar. Let's talk about your early days uh, playing guitar. When did you start playing? Uh, I was late, I was like 16. Really? Yeah. Who inspired you to start? I saw Deep Purple on, on the Machine Head tour, and I was front row, and Richie Blackmore was, was right in front of me. And that's why I play on that side of the stage. It's because it was like, and he's like smashing this strap up, and it was like, Wow. Do you remember your first uh, big gig? Yeah, I was, I was 17. Well, it's not really a big gig, it's about as big as this room, but it's the Marquee Club in London, and, and everyone's played there. You know, Zeppelin, The Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, The Who, The Pistols. My first gig with Def Leppard was, was there as well, and it's, it's just a great place. And I, I played it, we was an opening act when I was like 17, so that was, that was trippy, and obviously, you know, scared stiff, you know, the first time out there. Def Leppard's guitar section has created some of the most identifiable rock guitar riffs. How does that happen? Well, when Steve Clark was alive, they, we, we would do this thing. It was actually, a lot of it was Steve's idea of having this twin guitar harmony thing. And it, it was less about the lead rhythm thing. It was more about, okay, enhancing the vocal for a start off. And, and when, when there is a riff, making it really stand out. I, th I think the roles in Def Leppard were a lot different to a lot of the other guys out there. One guy would just be going, ah, ah, and the other guy would be shredding. With us, it would be someone would be playing a rhythm, like a muted rhythm kind of thing, like, gun, 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 and the other one would be gun, gun, ah, like an edge type thing against it. So it was, just, it was just creating space without being indulgent. Do you constantly look for that killer hook when you're writing? Yeah, yeah, sometimes it comes to you. You go, wow, that's cool. Have you ever sat down with a guitar, came up with a riff, and just thought, you know, man, that's, that's a hit? Yeah, yeah, um, and both things have happened, you know. I, it hasn't been, or, or it's very has been, you know. Both, both have happened, and, and you're totally convinced both times, so you never really know. How has the writing process changed over the years? I think we've all got better as, as, as writers. The, the more you spend around it, you, you just get better. You know, you, you kind of, recently, I, I get really bored if, if a song starts going over three minutes. Because, you know, you listen to that, some of the early, you know, the Stones or Beatles or the Motown stuff and 60s stuff. That it, was very, it was very short, it was very to the point. And, and there's a lot of, um, in the 80s, it got very indulgent. There was a lot of fluff in there. Do you have any advice for young guitar players starting to learn? Yeah, you, uh, you've, you've got to enjoy it. I think that the, there's a big problem with, with some people. It gets too strict. There's a difference between a musician and an artist. There's, a, like, you know, there's the whole session player thing, which is great, and it's great, and I've seen great guitar players or, or musicians that are just flawless. But I, I like the idea of expressing yourself, and that, that's initially why I picked a guitar up. You know, it was that or, or getting a trouble as a teenager, and, and it was it was a, a really creative outlet, I think. Yeah, obviously, you have, you've got to learn stuff and you've got to practice to a certain point, but I think you shouldn't forget the fact that, that you're using this to actually express something, and that, that's really important. Okay, one thing uh, on our minds at TPG is, will you subscribe to the TPG podcast? This is what this, the, wow. our interview Wow, oh, I suppose I better, hadn't I? Yeah. yeah. We do artist interviews and we have a podcast, so you can put it on your iPod. Perfect, that'd be great. Phil, thanks. We appreciate you spending some time with us at TPG and with the TPG podcast viewers. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. It's cool. Hope you enjoyed our time with Phil Collin of Def Leppard. Phil's an enthusiastic Jackson guitar and Dorsey. Look for Def Leppard's new album next year, 2008. We'd like to thank Def Leppard and all the crew, um, especially Malvin and Rocco, who are the, the managers of the Downstage Thrust Tour. Also want you to stay plugged in to theperfectguitar.com and catch another episode of the TPG Podcast. Jackson Guitars at theperfectguitar.com. <laughs> he, uh, he said one day he hopes you could be as good as him. <laughs> I got that on video. I'll keep, I'll keep practicing. Like pencil marks and stuff. 
And they were pretty cool. And uh, excuse me, sorry. Let me turn that off. That when Grove was still there. Hi, I'm Brent. Welcome to another episode of the Perfect Guitar Podcast. I didn't speak really clearly right there. Hi, I'm Brent. Welcome to the episode. Okay. Hi, I'm Brent. Welcome to another episode of the Perfect Guitar. Perfectguitar.com. 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 Perfectguitar.com.